Hello everybody, I'm Brewing and today I'm going to be looking at how Evil Tall, the main support player with the Chengdu Hunters, is able to get max value out of playing Mercy. This VOD is Chengdu's match against Seoul. We're looking at Game 30 for Sky Industries and I'm only going to be looking at Chengdu's B defense. So one thing to note here is that Prophet and Elsa have been playing Tracer Genji the whole time, meaning that nobody on Seoul has been able to contest Evil Tall's constant use of GA without getting resources. And this includes when he uses Valk. Evil doesn't need to worry about being killed in Valk because none of the heroes on Soul are able to focus him like uh, Ash or would all be able to. I'm going to bring this up because most Mercy players on ladder will play the same way regardless of the enemy's team composition. They're going to use Valk and GA from very passive safe positions even if there's nobody to shoot them. And this is a great way to have very little impact playing Mercy. Evil knows that Soul won't do anything about him committing a bunch of resources so he takes confident positions above the team fight in plain view of Soul. And he's able to see everybody on both teams like some sort of spy drone. So, once that's over, Chengdu's initiation ends, and now Sol are gonna try to re engage with Flux. And I said earlier that Sol won't be able to catch Evil Tall without committing resources. Well, that is exactly what they do. So, first up, Prophet is gonna try to catch Evil Tall, and he's gonna be forced to use all three blinks plus a recall. So, here he goes. 1-2, recall, and now Prophet has used all of his cooldowns. He has to stay on this high ground to play passive for the next 12 seconds while recall charges up. And now let's go back onto Evil Tall, who survived, and is going to get healed up back to 200. And soon Jester is going to try to recontest, and I'm going to actually slow things down here real quick. So, Evil Tall is pocketing Late Yunk, who's fully charged. Jester is going to take this time to dive Evil Tall. So, Evil, so Jester commits leap. Evil Tall is going to fly away because he's playing Mercy. Jester is now forced to walk across the point doing no damage. And then Prophet commits a pulse bomb. And then Jester has to use a second leap just to kill him. And while all that was happening, Creative on the Zen actually had to Discord Orb Evil Tall. So let's count here. Prophet used. All of his blinks, plus a recall at the beginning. Jester used two leaps, and in between those leaps, he spent a couple seconds just walking across point, doing no damage to anybody. Prophet committed his ultimate, his pulse bomb, and creative use Discord Orb. That's a lot of resources going to one player. And while that was happening, Soul failed to realize that there was a real, bigger threat in Late Young, who was fully charged that whole time. So let's go back. 20 seconds. And they'll go full speed this time. So Yelling this whole time had full charge and had grab. But Soul weren't focusing him. It was up to Illicit, who can't do anything. He gets grabbed. Illicit gets destroyed. Creative tries to kill him, but he can't from that position. Michelle can't do anything about him. And Jester's out of position to do anything. So this whole time, Light Young survives on less than half HP. He's able to get all of his bubbles out there, maintains full charge, and by the end of this team fight, he builds up to 33% to his next grab. So that was well worth playing Mercy. Light Young traded his own life for five of Soul Dynasty's cooldowns, and Light Young survived the whole time, and he built, and now he has 44% to his next grab and full charge. So moving on. Chengdu is going to want to force some ults out of Soul Dynasty with Jimmy's Blade when he builds it. Usually when you blade with a Mercy, you want the Mercy to use Valk so that she can use the longer beam range to stay out of trouble while Genji blades. But since Soul are playing Genji Tracer, nobody is able to kill Evil Tall when he flies above them. So Evil Tall is actually not going to commit the Valkyrie while Jimmy blades, as we'll see here. So, Jimmy Blades, and Evil Tall is able to just fly above them with no reason the world. He doesn't even have to use Falk. Meanwhile, Soul uses both Transcendence and Rally to try to get Jimmy off of them. Now, Chengdu are going to try to push out the kill creative. Soon, Soul are going to want to push back in with uh, Illus' Dragon Blade and Gesture's primal range. And because Evil Tall was able to save Valk, he uses Valk for the counter dive. And Chengdu peel all the way back to point. And you notice here, 
right there. While all the rest of the hunters are moving back to the point, Evil Talk actually stays right in the front. He can do this because once again Prophet and Elisa are playing Genji Tracer. There's nobody to contest Evil Tall. He can stand up here and get all the all the intel he wants. He can see where everyone in Seoul is positioned. And if Aemon needs it, he can help your Aemon escape. So this forward position actually gives Evil Tall the opportunity to see creative. He's gonna catch creative out by firing some nice shots into him and puts creative at a hundred health here. Which makes Leaves' job, who is setting up to get the one clip on Creative, that much easier. It becomes absolutely free, and it's done. Toby had no time there. If Creative had 200 health, then Toby probably would have been able to peel for him. He would have done the arm pack, and he would have been able to get the shield bash, maybe, before Creative died. So that forward positioning from Evil Tall allowed him to get the opportunity to gun down Creative and help Leave get the kill for free. There was no effort required there. And from this point forward, this is going to be a standard defense from Chengdu. Soul is already down 5 to 6. From this point on, Ibotal is going to do very nice mechanics on Guardian Angel, very safe jumping, be able to avoid the dives from Prophet and Jester, and he takes high ground to avoid Prophet, who's the only one left who can kill him. So let's recap here. I'm going to wrap things up in a nice little basket. Number one, be sure to adapt to the enemy team comp. Don't always play super safe and don't always play super aggro. The enemy team has nothing to stop you from super jumping and falking in their line of sight. Just do it. If the enemy team you are using here is that can check you and play around the architecture of the map more. Take positions that make you hard to kill. If you know the enemy is pushing, take safe positions from behind cover and use GA to zip between teammates to force the enemy to use more time and resources trying to kill you. Third, when it comes to your pistol, take advantage of the height you gain from super jumping and Valk will present many opportunities for you to take the shots at targets safely. And finally, be sure to practice your GA mechanics. You can practice super jumping in training mode, and you can practice using GA to maneuver around maps in quick play or custom games, or even competitive. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like the video and subscribe for more analyses on Overwatch and a few other games we're going to be doing in the future. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Have a good one.